Hi, and welcome to the channel. Right from the very first roof that I biocided, I realised straight away that a backpack wasn't going to be a good solution for applying biocide. So I started having a look around to decide what to use instead and decided to use a dosatron. So in this video, I'm going to be building a dosatron dosing box for applying biocide. So what you're going to need to build your dosing box, first of all, is a dosatron. This one is the D07RE5. Now I'll put all the links uh, in the description below. This one is from Holchem. Um, they seem like a really good supplier at, at very reasonable prices as well. So I'll put the link to them in the description below. So that's your dosatron, you'll need that. You'll need a pressure regulating valve. This is adjustable, but the dosatron works on a maximum of six bar. So you'll need that to make sure you don't damage your dosatron. Some Jubilee clips, a selection of bends and uh, barbs and hose tails. You'll need some uh, braided hose. All these fittings are three quarter inch BSP. Uh, and as in regard, oh, you'll also need a box suitable box to put it all in so that's that one there you will also need to build it a hole saw uh, I use a nut spinner 7 mil nut spinner these are really good for doing up um, Jubilee clips it saves your screwdriver slipping off when you're doing up Jubilee clips so I always keep one of these in the van all the time anyway and suitable spanners or uh, wrenches to make sure you can fit all your, uh, that it will fit all your fittings to tighten them up. So let's have a look at how we do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dry fit it all together. So what I've done is I've marked out the size of the box on the workbench with the handle in it as well. Uh, as that's just a hole, you want to put that there to make sure you're not trying to attach anything in a hole, which is very difficult. So with the Dosatron, when, you, when it comes, it comes with caps on the threads and it also came with me with the uh, adjustment screwed right, right in. So if you unscrew that, that's going to make it the longest that it's possibly going to be. If you don't do it like that and you mount it too low, when you come to fit your suction hose, you could find that it doesn't screw down far enough, it's catching the bottom. So I screwed that right out so you've got the longest length it's going to be. Undo your caps and all I'm going to do now is dry fit all the parts together. Now when I uh, looked at the schematics I was sure it said the Dosatron had got female threads, which it hasn't, it's got male. So I did order a couple of the wrong bends but uh, I've got the right ones now. So in, the, in these uh, female threads you have a little O-gasket just like you've got inside a hose pipe. Um, and so because of that you shouldn't need PTFE spray, uh, PTFE tape I should say. So I'm going to have two 90 degree bends so they're both coming down out the bottom. It will then go to your reducing valve. Uh, now there is a direction on the reducing valve so make sure you've got your flow going the right way. Now with the ones with the male thread what I'm doing I am fitting uh, a little rubber o-ring uh, and that will just again save you using PTFE tape so that should go nicely now with the reducing valve make sure when you fit it you've got room to leave to put in your gauge so that just screws in there probably put a bit of PTFE tape on that but that just screws into there uh, it'll then come out of the bottom of the reducing valve uh, Put the little o-ring on first that just slides on i've got a box of o-rings that i use for different things which are really cheap off amazon so just screw on that 90 degree bend now you'll have to work out the best way for yourself where everything's going to fit but uh yeah that's the whole point of dry fitting it first so that will come now these are um water butt connectors so i've just used those it's all three quarter inch bfp thread uh, which is the same size as a hose pipe connector so 
I can fit all this in, make sure it all fits together nicely before I actually connect anything and fit it permanently. Now I did think about having one in on one side and one in one out on the other side of the box but I decided there's no reason not to have it like that if that suits you better but I did decide that having them both on the same side you don't have to worry about banging the van banging the box when you got it in the van so much you've, you've only got to protect the one side so that's why I'm having one above the other uh, there so make sure it all gonna fit uh, make sure it all lines up make sure that the connecting bolts now the dosatron is just held on with two bolts make sure those aren't over the top of the handle so for when you drill them so it's all going to fit once you've got it all fitted in place and you know it's all going to fit then you can uh, cut up your hose i've used three quarter inch braided hose on this and connect it on and make sure everything fits in and all works together before you actually drill the holes in your box um, in my opinion the less holes you can drill in the box the better because that way it's working as a bund so what i'm going to do now is cut the hose to the side to the size i need it and put it all together properly So that's it all dry fitted up together now. Uh, so what I'll do now is, once I've got it in the right position, I can, yeah I've got a bit of play in it, but all being just using hose. Make sure that you've got your bracket in the right place uh, to where it's gonna fit. I'm just gonna mark that, and then move it, the dosatron out of the way, and then I can mark the holes where the bracket sits and I can transfer them then to the box to make sure it's gonna all fit there. And then I can drill a couple of holes in the box just to bolt that to and drill a couple of holes, work out where the holes are gonna go for the outlets in the box and I can drill those with a hole saw and then mount it all up into the box. You only just need to lock, nip the uh, nuts up uh, tight. You don't need them too tight because it is only plastic. So you don't want it breaking in, uh, cracking the mounting bracket or cutting into the plastic box. So just do enough so it holds it, um, but just not too tight. Just nip it so it's holding it firmly in place. So once we've done that, we just need to transfer the holes uh, from where they're gonna come through the side into the box. When you make your holes through the side of the box, make sure you need, make sure you leave enough room for the thread to come through, uh, so you can do it up. Because that is quite a big nut on there, so you need to make sure you've got room to do that nut up, uh, which just brings it away from that ridge a bit. And then you can drill the holes in your box. I'm just using a 28 mil hole saw cutter to drill the holes into the box. Once you've drilled your holes, I'll just use a Stanley knife for a bit of paper just to collect, get the burr off from around the holes and then that will just help you make a, a nice waterproof seal. So if you do lose any chemical, uh, you're not going to lose it out of the box, it's going to act like a bund. Um, I will stand this in a drip tray while I'm using it in case I get any leaks from where I connect onto it, but um, any chemical that's lost from it should be held inside inside the box. So once you've got all your holes made in your box and your mounting bracket in place, you can then try it all and then just finally nip the uh, connections up tight to make sure they're all as you want them. So all we've got left to do now is test it. So water comes in through the bottom one, out through the top, and the, the liquid 
in through there. So, so we're just going to test it now. So I've got a hose pipe going to the inlet. I've only got water in it, so it doesn't matter if it spills out onto the floor. Uh, and then just into a glass of water just to make sure it's sucking. So let's turn the tap on and see how we get on. And there we are. We can see, you can hear it uh, tapping as it ticks each time That's as it's sucking the uh, chemical through into the mixture and mixing it. And you can see it sort of squirts there as it ticks as well. As you can see, the level of the water that was completely full is going down. So it's definitely sucking out of there. I have got it uh, set to quite a high setting, so it does use quite a bit of that. So you can see there, no leaks, all working nicely. I did have to put a bit of PPFE tape around these couple of joints, but I just used the O-rings, but that seems to solve that now. So. If you want to see how I'll get on with it, make sure you keep watching the channel. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you found this uh, video useful. So thanks for watching. Bye for now.